G'day. Cheers. Cheers. How you going? Before we start, this is the first G40 Pale Ale I made. Citra and Talus. It's quite nice. It's very hazy. We'll get to that in another video. Hazy but tasty. I wasn't sure Citra, Talus, but it works. Another video on demand. I just want to start by saying I'm totally independent. I don't work for a home brew shop. I don't get paid for a home brew shop. I don't sell for a home brew shop. I don't own shares in a home brew shop. I'm independent. I'm not, I haven't done, ever done any sponsored videos, any paid videos, anything like that, up to until this point. That may change in the future, who knows? But up until this point, this is totally independent. So people asked the size differences. So I thought I'd pull them out. I didn't pull out all my Robo Brews and Brazillas, of course, because I've still got version one that's still working and version two. This is version three. It's still a Robo Brew, if you can see that. I'm not sure you can. Uh, I haven't had to, I don't know when the Brazillas came out. It's a while ago now, but my actual Robo Brews are still working. The only Brazilla I own is the 65. As you can see, the 65 and the G40 the 65 is a little taller. I'll go from the bottom of the feet to, oh, it's a bit hard to go to the top of the lid, but that's probably around 75 centimeters. And that's probably around, that's probably around the same, the height. The height is not much different to the lids. To the edge there, that's about 69. And to the edge there, I should have my glasses on, that is about 65. So this is a little taller. Although, I'm not gonna measure where the handles are. That's about 45, and that's about 42, something like that. These are rough measurements. Uh, you'll probably find the details on websites and things. Uh, this is just a rough measurement for now. Uh, and if you wanna know about the 35 litre, that is about 32 centimetres wide. I'm just talking about the lid again, like the width, not with the side recirc arms or anything. And to the edge, it's about 63 centimetres and with the lid, uh, it's getting closer to 69 to 70 centimetres. Up into here is 50 litres. I have uploaded a water video uh, today that I recorded a few weeks ago now. And in this one, just let me get rid of this. And in this one, I boil about, I can go up to about 57 litres. So it does hold more, of course. Or well, 15 gallons too, if you're worried about the gallons. Is about the max I put in that. I must sometimes go a tiny little bit over the 15 gallons, but not much at all. This unit here is the 35 litre unit and I can boil comfortably, or sometimes using firm cap, of course, uh, 30 litres in that. So when we're talking about boil maximums, it's probably 30 in that. Well, it is 30, that's what I do all the time. In here, well, under 10 amp, you'd still boil 50 litres. Uh, it would be a struggle, but it'd be enough to make a beer. It wouldn't be going insane. If anyone's seen some of the older Bromeisters, it's just that enough that the things are moving. But that's enough, that's all you need for boil. I brewed uh, a 40 litre batch in here. So I think the boil was about 44 litres yesterday. And it was barely moving, but it's enough. I still got my, uh, I think it was three litres boil off around about, just a bit over maybe. It's a bit hard to tell sometimes once you drain and all the trube and everything, you know what I mean? But I got my 40 litres out from about a 44 litre boil. Uh, this machine here, as I said, I can fill it right up. It's probably around 57, 58 litres I boil in this. Uh, and I can get about 46 litres out. I can fill two cubes. And I mentioned on one of the forums that this is a G70 with a top cut off, or a G70's a G40 that's sat in cow patties. I'm not sure, but it's the same. They're just shorter. So it doesn't hold as much liquid. Otherwise, you know, it's the same diameter and everything as the G70. These are all in a line too. I'm not using any of those 
photography tricks that some YouTubers use to make others look bigger by, you know, moving one forward and one back. These are all fairly much in a straight line. That's a straight line. They're the different sizes. There's nothing funny going on. No fish-eyed lenses or anything like that. I guess the only other thing to really check side by side is the mash pipes. So I'll just get rid of these. Ting! <laughs> ah. Thirsty work. I will say that the G40 weighs probably <laughs> twice to three times. Probably those two put together. These are the mash pipes, grain pipes, grain tubes, mash bags, whatever you want to call them. It doesn't really matter. I don't care. That's the 65 litre. That's the G40 and that's the 35 litre. There's really not much to tell about these. Again, there's a video coming out soon where we'll discuss a few points. I'm still not 100% sold on the overflow holes on the sides of these ones yet, but it's only early days. I haven't had any problems. I've hit all my numbers uh, without any problem at all. So there's nothing to complain about in that way. The one thing that I've noticed, and I don't know if it's just a coincidence, this wasn't entirely meant to be a fully hazy beer. I did use Verdant, but I dry hopped right near the end and you don't usually get that much haze. Verdant is great at hazy beers and fine NIPAs, and I would recommend it. But, uh, and the same with Staz. Staz's first beer was hazier than it was meant to be too, his hazy IPA, and you can have a look on his channel for his tasting of that. But as I said, this is early days. My second one brew is, uh, it's already cold crashed. It's actually in the keg and it's carbing. I put it on last night. So I'm about to go and crack that in a minute, but that's meant to be hazy. That was an IPA. But yesterday I brewed a double batch of Beefers 4X Gold style Australian lager, mid strength. And we'll see how that clears up. It was still a little hazy after pulling the mash pipe. But you know, once I had my Worflock in PVP in their boil, PVPP, <laughs> uh, it cleared up nicely still. So it's nothing, really nothing to worry about. And we've got a lot more brewing before, uh, you know, anything definitive I'm going to say about the G40. And I think that should be the same with anyone. Um, most of us YouTubers have only had them for a couple of weeks. Uh, I think I've had this for uh, maybe three weeks now. But uh, yeah. You can only brew so much <laughs> in that time. So I'm in no way slagging any of these units. I've used that unit millions of times. All right, I'll be honest, hundreds of times. Easy. I've used this unit probably 50 times. I don't do as many, I don't do as many double batches, uh, but I do use it for single big batches and uh, enjoy it. And this I've only done three, I've used it four times. I've done three proper batches and the sort of the wet sort of run. So all this video is about is just to show you the size differences, not to say one's better or one's worse. I really like the width of the grain basket of the grain father. Um, fat and wide, you know, to a certain extent is better than tall and skinny. Uh, you, you know, it's just easier to get a nice flow. You're not going to get so many stuck matches. That's why if I do big beers, even though a single batch, I'll do it in this uh, rather than this. It depends on the beer, but you know, if there's heaps of oats and things, it is easier to do a single batch in the 65. You lose, a, you can lose a little bit of efficiency because you're, uh, you're mashing in. There's a lot of dead space in the 65, probably 10 liters or 11 liters from memory. Uh, so it really cuts down on your sparge, unless you're gonna do extend your boil or something, which you, you can, of course. Uh, but I usually get about a 10 to eight liter sparge on this. Whereas if I do a beer the same size in here, you'd get a 15 liter sparge. It's usually about 20, 21 in the mash, about 15, 16 litre sparge, 14 litre sparge, something like that. Where this, uh, depending on the size, you know, it's around 26 litres mash in. And see, both of these, it's about 36, 35, 36 litres to get 23, 24, 22 litres out of, for a single batch. Um, now this one, mash in has been around 21, uh, it was 23 for the double batch yesterday, but the double batch was only a mid strength. So there was only about six kilo of grain, a little bit under. There's about, uh, there's just under seven liters of dead space underneath the bottom of the mash tun compared to, yeah, it was 10 or 11 in this. This is a little bit wider, which I really like. Uh, of course you can go too wide. You know, it's like the old days with the Esky. 
There's no point buying a, you know, a 50 gallon esky if you're going to brew five gallon batches. It's a waste of space. Uh, and you, you get less flow through the grain bed and it has troubles clearing, plus heat loss as well. You don't have to worry too much about heat loss in these things because you're recirking and keeping that heat in there. As long as you've got the lid on, you should be good to go. All right, that's about it. It was really a size comparison, and, which us boys are good at. And I think I've, we're done. That'll do. It was just to show different size. I can't remember who asked the question. Somebody did. Cheers. It's hot in here today. Like, subscribe, share. Thanks to my patrons, because without them, these videos couldn't happen. Thanks to Grainfather for su supplying the unit. Uh, this is not a paid. This is totally independent. It's my thoughts and nobody else's. All right, take it easy. Cheers. And before the clean freaks start, it's a boil kettle and a mash tun. It's not a fermenter, it's hot side. You clean it as well as you like. If you wanna go and polish it, you can. I'm not polishing my boil kettles. These are tools of the trade. They were my work tools. I'll leave the polishing for the fermenters. Take it easy.